when you call uh, 11 million people in this country illegals, and no human being is, an, is illegal, uh, isn't that spreading hate? Uh, that's precisely what hmm. is affecting the Hispanic community. Look, this is not politics for us. This is, this is personal. Uh, personal for a lot of us, but political too. Univision anchor Jorge Ramos on CNN last night, uh, echoing the lines of the Amnesty Open Borders crowd saying no human being is illegal and that Donald Trump spreads hate. Yeah, Ramos uh, was temporarily kicked out of Trump's news conference in Iowa after talking over Trump and simply not waiting for his turn to ask a question. Ramos was later invited back in to ask his question on immigration or well, statement, and, however you want to look and at it. And as it turned out, it was more of a five-minute debate. Obviously, Trump and others are getting pushback on comments concerning immigration reform, specifically calling for the end of birthright citizenship, which would mean a change in the 14th Amendment. But it need not come necessarily via a constitutional amendment. For more, let's welcome in one of my old colleagues on Capitol Hill, now a senator from the state of Louisiana, David Vitter. Senator Vitter is a member of the Senate Committee on Armed Services. He also introduced legislation called the Birthright Citizenship Act to close the loophole that exists in the 14th Amendment. David, it's good that you made some time here for Newsmax Prime. Thanks very much. Thanks, J.D. Great to be with both of you. And, and by the way, I'm also on the Judiciary Committee, which is a directly relevant committee for all this stuff. Absolutely it is. And let's talk about what's going on. You hear some television lawyers. They say, oh, this is locked in. But give us your reasoning for introducing the legislation and why you think it passes constitutional muster. Yeah, I think we can end birthright citizenship statutorily. I don't think it takes a constitutional amendment at all. And I think it's really important to do because clearly this is a huge magnet that is increasing and attracting more and more illegal crossings. About 400,000 uh, babies born of illegals in this country last year who automatically become citizens under this birthright citizenship policy, not the Constitution. Uh, I think it's clear that it's not mandated by the Constitution for several reasons. One, read the 14th Amendment. It has specific words. If you're born here and naturalized here and subject to the jurisdiction of this country, those words have to mean something. There were additional words put in the amendment for a reason. They have to mean something. Secondly, if, if you look at the legislative history, I think it's very clear that not everybody born here, for instance, uh, if uh, diplomats from other countries have children here, uh, it, it, it's very clear it means something. Senator, if you could kind of explain what birthright citizenship actually is and why sure. it's such a growing problem here in the United States. Sure. Well, we have this policy in the United States, and again, I underscore it's policy, not a constitutional mandate, that any baby born here physically is automatically recognized as a citizen even if both parents are non-citizens, even if both parents are illegal. Uh, now, 400,000 babies were born here of non-citizens last year and became citizens because of this policy. And we're one of only two advanced countries in the world that have this policy. Since you're a lawmaker working hard in the Senate, there are a couple other things we want to discuss in the two minutes sure. that remain. And one of those things is what you've been working on in terms of veterans, specifically the Veteran Small Business Ownership Improvements Act of 2015. What does this legislation do and why did you pursue it? Well, J.D., we need to serve our veterans across the board so much better. Uh, you know, we saw horrendous situations in the VA coming out of those scandals. We're working hard to reverse those scandals and improve health care. But we also need to get our veterans coming out of the armed forces reacclimated uh, to civilian life and, and successful. And as chairman of the Small Business Committee, uh, I've worked on several small business and entrepreneurship ideas. This is one bill, fully bipartisan, strong bipartisan support coming out of committee. It's now passed the Senate to give veterans, as they come out of the armed forces, uh, the tools they need to start small business if they wish and, and really get started on a positive note in civilian life. Senator, we only have about 30 seconds remaining. So before we let you go, we do want to talk about the 10-year anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Sure. It's this weekend. 
Just yeah. briefly, if you could, how much progress have you made in the last 10 years? We have made enormous progress. I mean, I would never would have guessed a month after Katrina that we would be where we are, particularly in New Orleans, with the recovery. So it's been very, very upbeat and positive. The one big Achilles heel in the city of New Orleans is violent crime. That is a serious problem. We need to attack that. We need to focus on that. But overall, our recovery has really been quite strong. And on that very positive note, Senator David Vitter, we thank you very much for your time here on Newsmax Prime. Moving along now, simple question for you. We need your opinion. Did Hillary Clinton break the law? We want to know what you think. Cast your vote at NewsmaxPolls.com.